Greetings. Thank you for joining the Title IV Part A, Subpart 1, Student Support and Academic Enrichment Session at the ACIT Virtual Conference on October 27, 2021. Today, I will be sharing the Title IV Part A Program Requirements and Allowable Activities. My name is Lenny Trigues, the Program Director for Title IV Part A at the Texas Education Agency in the Federal Program Compliance Division. Today's agenda, I will be sharing the program EEA has several new Title IV Part A resources that I will be sharing with you today. One new resource is the Title IV Part A Program Guide 2.0. The updated 2021 program guide provides federal and state program requirements, program guidance, and resources to assist districts utilizing Title IV Part A funds for programs and activities. A few recent updates to the program guide include federal internet safety requirements, federal non-smoking policy for children's services guidance, statewide use of funds data, and unallowable activities guidance. These are the items that you see in the change history following the cover of the program guide. This resource provides guidance and tools to enhance Title IV Part A program knowledge to both new and veteran district staff. Additionally, Please note that any sample language provided in sections of this guide are examples of what LEAs and or campuses could use as a guide. It is not meant for an LEA to copy and paste verbatim, as LEA policies and procedures may be different than what is provided as sample language. You may see a snapshot of the table of contents of the Program Guide 2.0. It provides an online table of contents that's linked to sections in the document. An A through Z topic list is provided. An acronym list and web resources are provided within the Program Guide. This program guide contains basic program information as well as direct links to related information and resources available on the Texas Education Agency website. This resource provides general information and should not be perceived as an all-inclusive listing of all statutory requirements. Upon certification and submission of the ESA Consolidated Federal Grant Application LEA certify that they will comply with all requirements noted in statute. Another new resource is the Title IV Part A Use of Funds. The Use of Funds resource document provides federal criteria that districts must meet to ensure all activities are supplemental and eligible to be supported with Title IV Part A funds. Districts must keep documentation on file that all programs and activities 
supported by Title IV Part A funds meet the allowable cost criteria. This resource provides specific guidance for district staff to ensure allowable cost criteria requirements are met prior to expending Title IV Part A funds for programs and activities. There is a new resource coming soon. The Title IV Part A Topical FAQs. TEA will be revising their frequently asked questions in the Federal Program Compliance Division. This is a snapshot of what the new and latest Title IV Part A topical frequently asked questions will look like once it is released in November of 2021. As you can see, instead of the questions being organized by month, they are actually organized by topic. For new questions and responses that have been added since the previous Frequently Asked document, they will be asterisked with red font. So for example, under flexibility, transferability, waivers, and carryover, the first two questions and responses are new for the November 2021 release. Question three on this page is a question and response that had previously been in past Title IV Part A FAQ documents. Title IV Part A has required stakeholders that must be involved with a comprehensive needs assessment prior to the LEA making decisions on the use of funds. Here is a list of the required stakeholders specifically for Title IV Part A that must be involved. Parents, students, private school officials, principals, teachers, school leaders, specialized instructional support personnel, local government, community-based organizations, Indian tribes, charter school leaders, and others with relevant and demonstrated expertise. You may find more detailed information of this requirement, not only in the Title IV Part A Program Guide 2.0, but also in the Title IV Part A Topical Frequently Asked Questions document. Another new resource is the Collaborative Comprehensive Needs Assessment Tool. What is the Collaborative Comprehensive Needs Assessment Resource Toolkit? The purpose of this toolkit is to provide a resource that brings together the comprehensive needs assessment requirements and recommendations for the federal programs such as Title I Part A, Title I Part C, Title II Part A, Title III Part A, and Title IV Part A. Texas Education Program staff collaboratively developed this resource toolkit at the request of LEAs and educational service centers. Although this presentation focus is on Title IV Part A, TEA wants to share how collaboration across federal programs may help to meet not only requirements of Title IV Part A, but other programs. Let's work smarter and not harder by using resources already designed with LEA's required stakeholders for Title IV Part A and the Title IV Part A required comprehensive needs assessments for LEAs with an allocation of at least 30,000. 
Regardless of the Title IV allocation amount, LEAs receiving a Title IV allocation must meet with required stakeholders to gather input and suggestions on how the Title IV Part A funds should be spent and are reaped or transferred for the school year. The CCNA Toolkit provides a quick and simple access to the requirements, one-pagers, guides, and tools for specific Title IV Part A federal requirements. And for those attending the Title IV Part A session today, all participants, ESCs, LEAs, private school officials, vendors, and consultants may receive this new CCNA toolkit at a special price. For you and only you, TEA is offering a special price. It is free. There is no need to spend any state, local, federal, or even your personal funds to download this CCNA toolkit today. As a bonus for attendees, TEA is giving you until December 31st for participants to download free Title IV Part A PowerPoint templates and tools to use and share with stakeholders and your districts as you plan for the school year's Title IV allocation. It's all free. However, I must make one small disclaimer. If you have any friends in the education business, TEA will make them the same offer. And guess what? TEA is feeling very generous today. You may download the toolkit resources 24-7, 365 days per year. From today until eternity, there is no December 31st deadline. Aren't you glad you're attending the TEA special on the Title IV sections of the CCNA toolkit? I feel special to share this opportunity and the resources with you. Now, let's get back to our regular schedule. The presentation slides also include the Title IV Part A program description that is already preloaded with the information and requirements, intent and purposes for Title IV that you can share with stakeholders as you make decisions. This slide from the Collaborative Comprehensive Needs Assessment Toolkit shares the Title IV Part A Comprehensive Needs Assessment citation, as well as noting that it is a statutory requirement for those districts receiving at least $30,000. In addition, it states that LEAs receiving an allocation of less than $30,000 should not be required to conduct a comprehensive needs assessment. However, they may if they make that decision to do so. This CCNA toolkit slide for the Title IV Part A program shares with your stakeholders the list of those who must be involved in regards to designing the Title IV Part A program for the LEA. It lists the required stakeholders, as well as defining the local government officials as local law enforcement, local juvenile court, local child welfare agency staff, or a local public housing agency.
the comprehensive needs assessment should initially be completed during the design and development of the Title IV Part A program. The section 4106 states the LEAs shall conduct a CNA once every three years if they have an allocation of at least 30,000 in the Title IV Part A program. However, a promising practice would suggest the LEAs review data and look at the comprehensive needs for the district and or campus and update their needs assessment so that it could best serve students and staff in the upcoming year. The CCNA toolkit is simply an option LEAs could use. It is not a TEA requirement to go this route in order to complete a Title IV Part A comprehensive needs assessment. However, if an LEA wanted to use the CCNA toolkit, they would have access to tools, pre-designed templates, resources, PowerPoint slides, sample questions, and many other supportive documents that could be used to meet the Title IV Part A comprehensive needs assessment requirement. It makes it simple and you do not have to recreate the will. This is an example of steps that describe the collaborative process in the CCNA toolkit. This is a sample of the stakeholder invitation template in the CCNA toolkit. Districts may use this invitation template to be able to personalize it and invite those stakeholders that are required for Title IV Part A programs. For the purposes of this session today, I, I am only going to share two additional templates from the CCNA toolkit, and that is a template for the agenda and meeting minutes of stakeholders, as well as the meeting participant sign-in sheet that includes the name, identified role, contact information, and a signature if it's an in-person meeting. These are just a few of the resources that are located in the CCNA toolkit. A district may decide to use these templates and personalize it for their use, or they may create their own or have some that they are already using within their district. Just remember for Title IV Part A, if a district receives greater than $30,000, they must complete a comprehensive needs assessment. Now I will stop and get some feedback from you regarding some of these CCNA toolkit templates and tools and resources. Could you please share in the chat box your thoughts? Is this something that you believe your district could use? Are you already using it as a district or is it something you look forward to maybe using some of the templates that I've seen? Regardless, I hope that all of the participants will take an opportunity and look at the complete CNA toolkit that is located. Um, and I will have a direct link to this toolkit later in the slides. The number one question that I receive all the time is, are there any Title IV Part A programmatic waivers? What I will share with you is that there are programmatic waivers for the past year, the 2020 through 2021 school year. Here is a list of the Title IV Part A programmatic approved waivers for last year. All of these areas were waived for the 2020 through 2021 school year only.
there was a news bulletin that was shared through the Federal Program Compliance Division listserv on May 27, 2021, that stated a little more detail regarding the programmatic waivers for 2021. There are no waivers for 2021 through 2022. So districts must go back to the original requirements for the current year. There are Title IV Part A requirements concerning the private nonprofit schools that are eligible to receive equitable services. The private nonprofit schools must be within the district boundaries to be eligible for Title IV Part A services. One of the most frequently asked questions that I receive are about private nonprofit and funding transferability and REAP. So this question, when should LEAs calculate equitable services if they plan to transfer Title IV Part A funds? And the response is on the slide. Before an LEA may transfer funds from a program subject to equitable service requirements, it must engage in timely and meaningful consultation. So even though it is allowable for a district to transfer funds out of Title IV Part A into another program, it must first have timely and meaningful consultation with the private school officials. With respect to the transferred funds, the LEA must provide private nonprofit schools, students and teachers, equitable services under the programs to which and from which the funds are reaped or transferred based on the total amount of funds available in that program after reap and transfer. That is only if that private school wants to participate in the other programs in which the funding was reaped or transferred. If a private school does not wish to participate in those areas, the LEA may not leave funding in Title IV Part A only to support private schools. May an LEA reap or transfer only those funds that are to be used for equitable services to private school students or teachers? No, the LEA may not reap and transfer funds to a particular program solely to provide equitable services. However, as I stated earlier, the LEA must consult with those eligible private schools and must provide those services um, to the private school if they wish to participate in those other programs. Another popular question is in regards to unexpended funds for equitable services. If a private school has Title IV Part A equitable services remaining and they decline at the end of the year, to continue participation or they close, what happens with the remaining funds for those services? The remaining Title IV Part A funds for equitable services are considered additional funds for services in both the public schools and the participating private schools the subsequent year on an equitable basis. This is the response that was received from the U.S. Department of Ed regarding any of the programs that receive equitable services under the Title VIII statute. Title IV falls under Title VIII. And so that is why the remaining funds would be distributed among the public and participating private schools in the following year on an equitable basis.
Now I will share a little bit about the Title IV Part A content areas. The first area is the well-rounded education opportunities. And you may find information about the well-rounded education in the ESA section 4107. The purpose of the well-rounded education is to provide an enriched curriculum and education experience for all students. And that is starting at the early learning opportunities to make time for exploration and continues through K-12 education. It also promotes a diverse set of learning experiences that engage students across a variety of courses, activities, and programs. Some examples would be foreign language instruction, college and career counseling, science, technology, engineering, and math or STEM, including computer science, arts and music education, social emotional learning, environmental education and civics education. For our visual participants, here you can see some pictures that provide just a few examples of activities and programs that could fit under the well-rounded educational opportunities. We have the uh, arts and music and dance. We also have a, sci a high school science class, um, a dental class where students are actually participating in a dental lab as a part of their dental assistance program in high school. We have construction class and we also have a welding class. And then you can see we have a computer lab. One of the students is digitally writing on the screen with a stylus. All of these are just examples of ways that a district could meet well-rounded educational opportunities. Safe and healthy students. Requirements and additional information may be found in the ESA section 4108. The purpose of the safe and healthy students are to improve school conditions for student learning, help students to feel healthy, safe, and supported, and help them succeed in school. And we know that if students are feeling safe and healthy and supported in school, it will help them to succeed in school and know that they have staff that support them, that love them and want the best for them. And so these are the purposes of that safe and healthy content area. Here's a visual representation of safe and healthy students. Some of the activities and programs that could be used in this area are school-based mental health services. It could be individual counseling or group counseling that the school district uh, hires or contracts for those services for students. Crisis management and conflict resolution techniques may be used. Also, some physical education uh, activities and programs that are integrated in healthy and active lifestyles that are structured um, within the school district. A district may also implement school-wide positive behavioral interventions and support. These are just a few of the things that may be implemented under the safe and healthy students as long as a district is supplementing and not supplanting any of the state required mandates. And then we get to the third content area of Title IV Part A is the effective use of technology. Additional guidance may be found in the ESA section 4109 as well as 
the program guide 2.0, the title for part A, topical areas of the frequently asked questions, and on our website. Here are a few purposes of the effective use of technology. The content area of Title IV Part A. The main purpose is to improve academic achievement, academic growth, and digital literacy of all students. Accelerate and expand the impact of effective practices that support student learning. Provide historically disadvantaged students greater equity of access as well as involving the community and expanding that growth opportunities for all students. Some Here are a few additional highlights about the effective uses of technologies and sample programs and activities. First, that for technology infrastructure, there is no approved waiver for 2021 through 2022. So districts must meet the requirements if they have an allocation greater than 30,000 of not spending more than 15% for technology infrastructure, which includes devices, equipment, software applications. You can also see that there are some students that are working in a computer lab, they're learning, they're working well together, but in order for those students to know what to do with those devices, as far as the teacher's instruction to them, the teachers and staff must be provided ongoing staff professional development in the area of technology. And so you can see that there are two visuals where there are teachers that are working in regards to the use of technology and designing plans and what can they do and collaborating with one another. Another use of funds is making sure that students in rural, remote and underserved areas are provided access to high quality digital learning experiences and access to online courses. Evaluation of Title IV Part A program effectiveness. Each LEA that receives the Title IV Part A program funds must meet the following program evaluation requirements. Periodically evaluating the effectiveness of the activities to support the program objectives and intended in outcomes annually submit a report regarding how funds are used to meet the distribution requirements and how the expenditure will be evaluated to measure a positive impact on student achievement. Every program and activity that is supported with Title IV funds must be able to meet these requirements and have an evaluation of effectiveness. In regards to travel, any travel, educational travel, must include an evaluation of that travel that measures the impact on student achievement. Title IV Part A does allow for educational field trips, competitions, and out-of-state travel if the comprehensive needs assessment states that it is a priority as well as you have followed all of the requirements in the use of funds document that I shared earlier. Additional program requires for requirements for Title IV Part A ed educationally related funded travel are here, identified in the comprehensive needs assessment, um, included in the campus improvement plan, allocable, reasonable, necessary. You must remember it has to have an, a positive impact on student achievement, and it includes an evaluation measuring the impact on that student achievement. In addition to including instruction that addresses the TEKS and including instructional activities that cannot be conducted on campus.
one of the areas in which TEA recommends Title IV Part A funds be spent in is on school safety. And in your program guidelines, there is a recommended use of funds for school safety. And as you can see, TEA has previously awarded the grants to LEAs for many purposes that meet the LEA's identified needs, including school safety. The funds must be prioritized to immediately implement school safety improvements on campuses, including counseling and mental health programs, addressing ways to integrate health and safety practices into school or athletic programs, and disseminating best practices and evaluating the program outcomes to any LEA activities that promote student safety and violence prevention. These are just a few of the school at safety allowable activities. Safe and healthy students, allowable activities, just again, just a few areas, promoting community and parent involvement in schools with Title IV funding, uh, school-wide positive behavioral interventions and supports, establishing or improving a dropout prevention program. These are just a few of the activities that are allowable under Title IV, as long as they meet the use of funds uh, criteria and they are not supplanting. If it is a state requirement for a district, the district must adhere to the state requirement and not use Title IV funds. Now I will stop and address just a few of the Title IV frequently asked questions. Districts know some of the things that are allowable, but what is unallowable use of Title IV Part A funds? Again, those activities that are mandated by state law, rule, and regulation a state board of education rule or local board policy cannot be funded with Title IV Part A grant funds. And then you see a list of just a few of the state required um, activities that would not be able to be supported with Title IV funds. You may find additional information in the TEA budgeting cost guidance handbook on unallowable use of funds and activities. There is a couple of statute general provisions that I have included here that are new uh, to your assurances and your consolidated application guidelines this year, as well as the ESA statute part F, which is stating construction and renovation and repair may not be um, an activity that can be supported with Title IV Part A funds. These are requirements that have always been um, in statute. However, they have been added through an errata for Title IV Part A programs. You can find additional information in the Budgeting Cost Guidance Handbook. May an LEA use Title IV Part A funds to provide professional development opportunities for staff? Yes, if the Title IV Part A comprehensive needs assessment and data support the specified professional development opportunities and it meets all allowable activities and the use of fund requirements. So again, you would go back to the use of fund requirements. However, an LEA with an allocation of at least 30,000 must provide activities in all three areas. Promotional items. I received questions about, you know, can we use Title IV funds for Red Ribbon Week, uh, promotional items, physical education week, safety week, 
And the response is no. These type of items fit into the category of advertising and public relations that are not allowable for the federal program. May and LEA used Title IV Part A funds to purchase bus security cameras. This was a very popular question last year as well as this year. And I wanna get your thoughts before I reveal the answer. So please put yes or no in the chat box. And I'll give you just a few seconds to respond to that question. Thank you for responding. The answer is yes. If the LEA has supporting documentation that bus security cameras meet all requirements listed in the use of fund document that has been created, in addition to it, the comprehensive needs assessment, the campus improvement plan, all of that is included in the use of funds uh, document. Also, if an LEA has an allocation of at least 30,000, it must also provide activities in all three categories. So a district would not be able to spend 100% of their funds on bus security cameras. A district has had issues with bomb threats and anonymous calls regarding weapons on campuses. The district would like to purchase a service that would identify the caller and location. May an LEA use Title IV Part A funds for this service? Let me know what you think in the chat box. This was a question that went to the U.S. Department of Ed and their response was a phone identification system to track calls is not reasonable and necessary use of Title IV Part A funds. So the response to this question is no. The Title IV funds support LEA staff and or security personnel to attend virtual practice or active training shooter drills. The response to this question is no. The Title IV Part A federal funds may not be used for staff or security personnel to attend shooter drills. However, the LEA may prorate training for the portions that do not include any virtual practice or active shooter drills and only use Title IV funding to pay for the instructor-led sessions. That is if you have met all of the use of fund criteria. May Title IV Part A funds in the safe and healthy students content area be used to support parents and community members. At this time, I'm gonna pause just for a second. I would like for you to enter some of the ways in which your Title IV Part A funds support parents and community members. This will give others an opportunity to see what is happening in other districts. Please put your response in the chat box. I'd like to share just a few resources that are available to you. If you're searching for answers to Title IV Part A questions, we have several documents and areas in which you may receive answers. The first is the Federal Program Compliance Division's webpage, Title IV Part A program page. There is a program webinar regarding Title IV Part A requirements that's posted on our webpage, as well as the program guide and the frequently asked questions. As those two documents are updated, they are replaced on the current page. Our ESA Consolidated Plan Application Program Guidelines, Program Specific ESA Provisions and Assurances, and the Collaborative Comprehensive Needs Assessment Toolkit. And all of these are clickable links. So within your PowerPoint, you'll be able to click and go directly to the website to provide additional information.
here is just a snapshot of our Title IV Part A webpage. As you can see, it starts off with the intent and purposes, some LEA requirements, and then there's other related content area on the side. And then um, we also have our Title IV Part A Capacity Building Initiative. And here are the contacts to that. Rod Pruitt and Nancy Gale are wonderful contacts to provide all kinds of information regarding state requirements for a Title IV Part A, as well as providing lots of resources to be able to support district schools, parents, and community members. You may go to their website and be able to find lots of different documents and resources that will help you as you work through Title IV Part A requirements and be able to use some tools. And I have linked their website within the PowerPoint slide as well. On the um, Title IV Part A Capacity Building Initiative website, they do have information that is specific to state requirements. In order to ensure that you're not using funds, federal funds to supplant, you must ensure that state mandated requirements are supported with state and local funds. You can find information about what those state requirements are that may be in some of the Title IV allowable use areas but not supported with the dollars because it's a state requirement. And so they have uh, information regarding that. They have an FAQ document. They have links to other resources to help you. And if you have any questions in those particular areas, you can always feel free to call or contact Rod or Nancy, and they'd be happy to help you out. The USDE Department of Education also has the non-regulatory guidance that's posted on their website. We have this on the TEA website as well. And this is just a snapshot of showing the contents um, and the, um, it gives you all kinds of information on the content areas and the Title IV Part A requirements. And it is published by the US Department of Ed. And the latest um, revision was November of 2016. You may also find answers in the ESA statute, the non-regulatory guidance that I just shared, as well as the National Center on Safe Supportive Learning Environment that is a contractor by the US Department of Ed to provide information related to the Title IV Part A program. So that's another website that you could go to to receive additional um, tools and resources and information. All of these websites are also located on the TEA webpage under the Title IV Part A program website. If you have questions later that you could not find in any of the resources or you were talking to some friends and they didn't have answers or you it's maybe it's a new question that hasn't even been addressed or if you just need support you may also contact myself at the ESA support at TEA Texas.gov email and I'd be happy to answer your questions thank you so much for your time and you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.